um, at this moment are struggling in the worst possible ways. And then an embodiment of their struggle is Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes, just like we talked about Nico Jackson yesterday, unbelievable player in terms of movement and everything. But once he gets in front of the goalkeeper, seems to just lose, seems to have a romance. He said, everything, I, I don't think they should, they should go down. They have shown, and I, I, the problem is with this, all these kinds of things, when they escape now, next season, you see them, they go back to their, their habits. Mm. Everything does mm. this in every season, five games to go, six, seven games to go. They raise their game, try and survive. The season starts again next season. They approach it like they are sure to be in top four. You know, I don't know if it's a cultural thing, I don't know if it's a The drama in the EPL running continues. A few weeks ago, Ugo, my brother, if you remember, I told you all these teams, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool, they will all chop their breakfast. And I kind of felt that Arsenal was better off losing that game, six games to go. Just as long as at any moment from now. Not saying that they're not going to lose anymore, but I don't think so. I still feel that City will drop points this evening. Everton, who hasn't won a good same pack against Liverpool in 14 years. The last time they did, players like uh, uh, who does this like a keeper, what we are saying, the Moyes was in that team that beat Liverpool last at uh, good same pack. Today, they won 2 0, four games to end of the season. Liverpool drop points in the at the crunch time of the title challenge in EPL. You are welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Reggie. Thanks, Reggie. Yeah, it's um, these are these are crunch, what they call crunch time uh, in the EPL. Four, five, six games to go. The the, the die is cast. The stage is set, and uh, three teams have been at the top. Uh, you know, the the men are, are starting to be separated from the boys. <laughs> Let's see what happens. In the next few games, yes, for those who are calling out at Teta, calling out at Arsenal, now you can see that, like Ubuma has always said in this program, it's not easy to challenge in EPL, especially when you have Manchester City beating that your net. People who are saying the Bakusa has won the league first time for them with Alonso's first team, you can see why he can win in, in Germany. He, I'm sure as good as the job he has done in EPL, that will be nowhere near winning uh even making top four i think i thought that deserves more flowers uh i was i have a, a video that's coming out yeah i said win or lose the epl now Tata has done so well for us now in the last couple of seasons and including this season this, so far this season 40 uh, 14 of 16 games scoring 45 goals Bro, I don't know how else they have scored the most goal in EPL. They have uh, considered less top of the league, four points. And, you know, what, what more can you ask from your team? What, what, what do you put... Uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you see this one? <laughs> the general thoughts. General thoughts on the game. Uh, you know, I did not expect Liverpool to drop points today. But like you've always said, uh, you, you've... Right from the beginning of the season, you've always felt that Liverpool, that there are, there are a few chunks in their armor this season. Um, you you felt that the recruitment wasn't what it was supposed to be, and and the strength and depth wasn't there. Um, I thought the strength and depth was there, um, and I also thought that the decision that uh, Jurgen Klopp made mid season. To announce at the at the top uh, beginning of the year to announce that he was leaving Liverpool, I thought it was going to be a feeling. Uh, it was going to really help the team galvanize to try and send him off in the best possible way, winning as many trophies as possible. Um, however, I think that um, he added a bit of momentum at some point, but right now it's starting to have an adverse effect. Uh, because I think they are trying way too much to do, you know, everything possible to win him trophies and send him off in a, in a greater mode. I would I watched this game today. Somebody that typified 
what I'm talking about here um, is Endo. Endo was hired mid-season. Um, I thought the guy was all over the place, fouling people up and down. Instead of, you know, taking the ball, doing what a midfielder is supposed to do, dictate play, protect the ball, you know, you help your teammates, get them into better positions, protect your defense. He was fouling way too much and way too recklessly for my liking. He could easily have gotten to yellow cards in the limited time he was on the field. So, yeah, I think that Liverpool um, at this moment are struggling in the worst possible ways. And then the, an embodiment of their struggle is Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes, just like we talked about Nico Jackson yesterday, unbelievable player in terms of movement and everything. But once he gets in front of the goalkeeper, seems to just lose, seems to have a romance with the bar. Keeps hitting the bar all the time, hitting the post all the time, not doing exactly what everybody wants him to do to steal the ball in the net. There's a pass that... um. Trent Arnold gave him all you needed to just calm down, collect that ball, and stick it where you want to stick it. You're I don't know what he was doing with that pass. You're Unbelievable. You're blasted. Yeah. Yeah, for me, for me, uh, like I said all through the season, I knew, I believed, let me not say I knew, I believe that from the summer, the business that they did, Liverpool didn't do the right business. We have watched it here for so many decades now. All the teams, all the managers have succeeded in EPL, they always start building from the back. When the club arrived, he, did, he made a mistake after three or four years. He corrected it, brought in, brought in uh, Van Dijk, uh, Robinson, and uh, a few other players, strengthened them defensively. And going forward, Liverpool we are fire. And they, that's how they achieved some, some success. This season, I, I thought, and the reason, maybe the reason why a lot of people did not see, but God, the fire they had going forward. So I knew that in the defensive midfield position, they are not strong enough. Defensively, it was only Van Dyke. Every other player they have in that back four is just uh, the Robinson has dropped so badly. You know, so I knew it was going to be a problem. Then in the defensive mid position, there was no protection. And though for me was never going to be the guy that will rescue that will you know, protect Liverpool. If you remember for a very long time, Klopp was playing McAllister as a defensive midfielder. And I, I kept saying that this guy is not a defense, it's not a DM. He is like uh, Alisson is like uh, Alistair is like uh, Depaul in Argentina. They they have all the energy up top in the midfield to put pressure on the opponent. Mark they, they can mark a player, but doesn't have that discipline to sit there and doesn't have it to portray the defense. So I knew that that was going to be a problem when they hired when they signed the uh, Gavin Bird. I thought okay maybe if if he is what they say he is. Probably he will come in there and do a job. But unfortunately, they were not see, they were not playing him in that position as well. He was still playing like McAllister when he comes in or the times for summer slide. So no, they did. So I, I I always felt that they were, they were going to have that issue, you know. And that's what how it has happened. Liverpool, I knew they didn't have. And if you see what they did last season, and a lot of people said, yeah, Liverpool is back. There is no serious team that will have the problem that Liverpool had last season. Had they performed? Yes, twelve end of the season they came back. That could have, that showed me that there was this, there was serious crack in that team, and I didn't feel that it was addressed in the summer. So that's why I was always confident that Liverpool cannot go all the all the way. They have done bits, and another thing that also I believe that affected Liverpool was with all the things I have said, club jettisoned his philosophy that got him because when you come to EPL, if his effort. If it's a uh, power, energy, commitment, a lot of teams have it. So if you go in every game trying to at muzzle and at fight every team, it's not going to work because th there are times that you won't be able to do it. There's times, there are many times you will meet teams who have the same energy. The thing that always stands teams like City out is that they have the energy. Then they have the quality, they have the edge, the quality edge in quality. So when they wear you down physically, then if it's not working, they use their quality to, you know, to go through. So Liverpool has been fighting with power, with you know, effort in the last maybe five weeks, winning games, uh, scrapping wins. I knew it was not going to go all the way. And uh, as a national fan, I hope this will make them, you know, give up on the charge and let it be between us and City. I still feel that Manchester City, just like Liverpool, they have been lucky. I don't know how you play 16 games and have maybe two or three clean sheets 
and still be winning games. I think at some point between now and the next two games, City might probably drop points. So it's all it's just a City and Arsenal now. In fact, for me, it's for Arsenal because uh, Tottenham is a, is a very big game for Arsenal. But if I have anything to say, say to any Arsenal fan, this season, this team has defiled, have broken so many long years of standing records. They have not lost against any big six this season. So, yes, a lot of people will say they haven't won at uh, Tottenham in years. That's going to be another record that Arsenal will break this season if they really want to win the title. If Arsenal win at Tottenham on Saturday, I believe that somehow they will win the league. Uh, you know, Sunday, Sunday is, has, has a reputation. It's just like when you had Allardyce in EPL. He's, he won't, nobody rates him as a top coach, but somehow he, 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 manage, he manages to, or he managed to build a tradition for himself. If you remember last season, I think last season or two seasons ago, this same son dies with a bond. Did the same thing to Arsenal. They were losing to everybody when it was time for Arsenal was going for, I think, top four or something, and they did the same thing. Everything has been fighting out of relegation but with a, a useless defense. Today, they show up in a different manner at Mosul Liverpool and got their two goals. Is, is there anything that... What was the highlight of the performance today for you? Um, highlights will be the dedication with which um, the Evertonians played, typified by uh, Braithwaite. This young centre-half you know, that, that plays with Tarkovsky in the middle. What a player. I don't think he's going to be at Everton uh, beginning of next season. I hear even Real Madrid are interested in him. He, he he really showed what, you know, it meant to him. They did all their best to, to, to try and win this game today, at least to ensure their survival uh, in the EPL. So the highlight would be their, their defensive efforts, the energy they put into every tackle, the energy they put into closing down the spaces for Liverpool. Um, but the, the man, my man of the match, of course, would be uh, Jordan Pickford. Pickford is a much, uh, you know, Adam maligned, he's a polarizing figure. So many people have said, hey, just dude, step away, let somebody else keep for England. But he's never put a foot wrong for England. And he today he showed why... Um, He's the number one goalkeeper for, for England. He did extremely well today for, for, for Everton. So their defensive efforts, their doggedness, their being able to be efficient enough to take their chances uh, really showed. They really stepped it up today. So uh, kudos to them. Kudos to Sean Dyke, like you mentioned. Brilliant, um, brilliant uh, at what he does. What he does is to secure the defense. They've actually, this is their 11th clean sheet for Jordan Pickford this season. It's not a fluke. You see, what I've seen with the EPL, EPL is a, is a league of work. When you work hard in the EPL, more often than not, you get results, right? You, 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 your record will show that you worked hard. So um, it's not easy. I'm thinking if Everton have kept 11 clean sheets in the EPL, they deserve not to go down if you put in that kind of work. Exactly. Yeah, so kudos to them, credit to them, that they are able, they, they've almost ensured their survival. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 all you said is correct. Pifford was good today. Bradway was good. I think uh, what's this guy's name? Ghana. Though sometimes he took some some risk, you know, bringing the ball up from the from from the back. Uh, what's his name? Uh, the striker as well has some very good performance. And I think I Cover Lewin, Cover Lewin, and Decore as well. But one of the things also that stood out for me, they, they were not just fighting, they also gave Liverpool something to think about, you know, going forward. And they were not just like balloning the ball from back to front. They were actually building building some, putting together some passes yes. up front and creating some some yes. havoc in Liverpool's defense as well. Uh, you know, so yes. I, I think uh, like you rightly said, everything I I don't think they should they should go down. They have shown uh, and I, I, the problem is with this, all these kinds of teams, when they escape now, next season, you see them, they go back to their, their habits. Mm. Everything does mm. this in every season. Five games to go, six, mm -hmm. seven, seven games to go. They raise their game, five survive. Their season starts again next season. 
they approach it like they are sure to be in top four. You know, I don't know if it's a cultural thing. I don't know if it's a quality thing. I don't know what's going on in Everton. If they survive this the drop down this season, I think they need to look themselves in the eye and tell themselves that we can do better than this. We shouldn't be in this uh, dogfight every season. You know, if we can put together wins, 10 games to the end of the season and survive, why can't we just start it from the beginning of the season? You know, I, I think uh, something needs to be done. I don't know if, if uh, Sondar is going to be there next season. If he's going to be there, I think he needs to, you know, talk to rally his uh, his troop and get them ready. Everything should be normally the traditional mid table team. Sometimes they push for Uf UFA or something. And sometimes they even go to finals of the FA Cup or something. I think they, they 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 need to start seeing themselves as that kind of a club, with that kind of stature in EPA, and all this uh, fighting for for relegation. Every season. So, you know, having seen this result this this night, what what was your what's your instinct telling you? Do you think uh, it's a good omen, or you think it's just one of those things that can still happen? Is this still open for you, or do you think Liverpool is is out of the race? You know now. No, by no stretch. Liverpool are not out of the race. Um, and well, I guess it, it will be the main thing in the press. They're gonna everybody's gonna say most of the pundits are gonna say they are out of the race, but they are not. They are not because um, they are a strong side. No doubt about that. And the two other teams, Arsenal and, and City, are strong teams, but nobody's guaranteed any three points. I'm not going to call anything until probably uh, maybe two games left. When I am sure, as long as something is mathematically possible, it can be possible in this EPL with this season that has been like this, Right. Um, so, but I can say confidently that as an Arsenal fan, I believe our team will win the rest of their games. Um, it's not going to be easy, but because they work so hard and they worked so hard up to this point, that hard work will continue and hopefully they gain from it. Uh, for Liverpool, this is a major setback, no doubt about that. Uh, but they are not out yet until they are really mathematically out. I'm not going to count them out. Let's see what happens in their next game. Um, also for for Manchester City, let's see how they do against Brighton tomorrow. See, Liverpool are just three points behind us now and uh, one point behind. Oh, two points behind. Yeah, one, one, uh, two, 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 point, two points. Two points, two points I mean, behind City. I think they so, have two games in here, possible six points. So if City win their two games, hmm. that would be eight points. For me, hmm. I believe Liverpool is out of it. Not for, with us now, with City. But like you said, it's football. Anything can can still happen. But anything that can make Liverpool come back to it to be able to like overturn City. That means City has lost two games, and mm -hmm. obviously, Arsenal and not think Arsenal from now we should if they want to win the league, they shouldn't be losing two games. They shouldn't be losing two games. So for me, I believe Liverpool is out of it. But because it's football, yes, anything can still happen. That's what percentages. How do you allocate your the you know probability for any of these three teams to win the league. Right now, I put City at fifty percent. I put us now at thirty percent. Uh, no, I put City. Yeah, I put City at fifty percent. I put Arsenal at thirty, and I put uh, Liverpool at twenty percent, making up hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I will go. I will go City fifty, Arsenal forty, Liverpool ten. For me, Liverpool is. Uh, Almost out of, not just because of this result, but because what I've, I've been saying for a while now, the way they've been playing, mm -hmm. Liverpool have not. Yeah, you've, they, you've, they, you've been saying it. Yeah, they've not impressed me the way they play. It, most especially, I don't know why pundits are not putting this out. Two, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, the all they were saying was, yeah, Liverpool, this is the uh, high champions win game. This, you know, but for me, they were just crapping wins. Some of them, the freeze error, were giving them three points. Some of them, Opponent's defense was even dashing them goals and points. So I never felt that they, 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 they were really earning it. And now, even for that, that their confidence is going to drop. Then the, the, the highest sign for me was the tiredness of Van Dyke. You can see that Van Dyke is tired, both emotionally and physically. Players are running, running on him now. He's just doing what he can because of the quality that he has and the stature of, of the kind of player he is to keep keep it going. And I think if you were to be another player, 
by now they'll be asking to be dropped for some games and if you also remember five or six weeks ago i asked a question without Van, without uh, salah will liverpool be in the title race and you know i think it was when he came back from from the transfer win from the nation's cup i think i think that was when i asked that question i, I remember saying that i don't think uh, Liverpool can be in this race if Salah is not firing. You guys told me uh, they have Diaz, they have Jota, they have Nunes, the other players who are scoring. I said, no, if you look at it very well, Salah's contribution, even when he's not scoring, he's making assists. And at that time, I, I remember pointing it out, and it looked like he was off it. This is in Salah, for me, I don't think he wanted to be in Liverpool. Somehow they made him stay. Now news is out that he's going to be leaving in the end of the season. So I think one reason is true is because Salah is not just, you can imagine Liverpool are struggling to win game. Sometimes club subs him out. That tells you what you want to hear because you want your best players to be, you know, regardless of what is going, you know that one chance they can deliver the three points for you. But sometimes club subs him out and that tells you that, no, there is uh, something wrong somewhere. I believe uh, it's a good day for any Arsenal fan out there. It's a good day for City. It's always easy or better for you to have some just one team challenging you than to have three teams. Because when you sleep, you can look back and say the other team has slept and it's okay. But even if you are three, you can sleep, you can sleep, then another team sleep. But the third, the third team is still up there. So it's still not good for you. So I think uh, the better Liverpool or anybody drops off the race, the better for for the other two teams. So that they can you can know who who you're looking above your shoulder again so it is a good it's a good one for us now viewers let us know what you think do you think uh, liverpool is out of the race and um, what's the percentages you're going to give don't forget to subscribe if you have not done so yet if you're new to the channel we uh, look, look look forward to the highlights of this week all the games this week on our channel we'll have the highlights for all the games check check, check them out and uh, relieve the moments Arsenal fans i know some of you are still in the euphoria of that win, that five goal morning of uh, Chelsea yesterday, we have the highlight on the channel. Any, 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 what's here? Any last word before we go? Well, yeah, let's let's keep going. Please stay with us on transit. It's been a long season. We've been there every step of the way. Uh, we encourage you to keep subscribing. Please keep uh, forwarding to your friends. Keep inviting people. Keep liking the videos. Uh, let's keep going. We have five or so games to go. Uh, looking forward to a really, really interesting uh, end, end to the season. Yeah, what was the position for us for Sunday? Uh, for Arsenal Tottenham, I I believe Arsenal will win, but I don't, I don't want to predict a score, score line. <laughs> but I believe Arsenal. I'm yeah, confident. Yeah, you have to predict that yeah. one. It's going to be a very crunchy tie. Uh, a tie mm -hmm. and i pray that uh what's his name angie will continue his stubbornness and play the high line the way he normally does it looks like uh, martinelli was rested for that game so i hope uh, i believe he's going to start for start against tottenham and uh, hopefully arsenal grabs the three points however they do it yeah be it one goal be it five goals anyhow they do exactly it, grab the three points and again if you are in houston Houston area on Saturday at the Merriam Park. We're going to be there for the pre-game show as we did against uh, City. Then on Sunday we'll be at the at the pub where Arsenal fans will watch the game. There's going to be a lot of shows. We're going to have some pre-game shows, halftime shows, predict and win. We we'll have some. Uh, we're going to release the, our new gear, the Arsenal gear and the tumbler for the summer. So we're going to be some giveaway prizes out there on Sunday. Join us if you are in Houston. Thank you for watching. Ugu, my brother, see you on Saturday. And uh, All right, bro. ciao. Thank you.